Hello. Um, this is my production breakdown of my song Windowsill. And I'm not a YouTuber, so I'm not gonna try and do all these like intro things. And I don't have the <laughs> excited YouTuber voice or editing skills, so bear with me. I'm trying my best. Uh, I'm doing this as an alternative to a stream, so let me know what you think. Would you rather go back to just Instagram live streams, or is this a better format? So I'm going to give this a go. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each individual track. So there's about 20 odd. And I'm just going to talk about effects, anything interesting about where I got the samples, um, just anything interesting and if you don't know anything about production that's fine you can watch this i will try and explain things as best as i can i might for things i use on everything so your eq and your compression i might just explain it once or twice and then reference it um there's plenty of videos out there if you're interested um yeah so i'm just gonna go for it and the whole track is on streaming and on bandcamp um so go, I'd recommend checking it out first, that makes a lot more sense, but I'm not gonna judge you, either way, do whatever you want, as long as you listen to it at some point, that would be nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go for it, I'm gonna start with drums, move all the way through, uh, back into vocals, so feel free to skip around, I guess, if you wanna know about a specific part, but yeah, I'm just gonna go for it now, so, drums. I start off with a MIDI drum kit, this is an Ableton one, it's called the Datai kit I think. Uh, I just thought I had the right sound for what I was going for, this kind of house techno style. Um, so as you hear, this is a kit on the um, MIDI drums. So I have that off now and I just took each track individually, froze it, flattened it, so I just had the audio. So there's about eight-ish um, drums. Most of it's just like standard parts for kit, and I have a couple perks in it. So the kick drum, so compression EQ is something I use on pretty much everything. It's just producers will use compression EQ on everything. In the most basic terms for anyone who doesn't know, compression is kind of just making the volumes more even. So you're taking loud, sounds are making them quieter and you're taking quiet sounds and you're gonna make them louder um and that's just so that a song sounds a little more even and it just sounds nicer to listen to um eq is controlling what frequencies um are gonna be the most prominent or things you get cut out or all together and that just helps with volume helps differentiate different sounds in a mix and helps them sound clearer and helps it sound more realistic sometimes or less realistic it's just another way of manipulating the sound so i've got compression eq here what you'll often see is these types of eq uh, we've got low and high pass and that's just to take out any completely unnecessary stuff so this kick drum you really want sitting in the bottom so I want all these low frequencies. So that's what the kick drum sounds like. I have also a little bit of automation here for volume, which I did using a utility plugin because I uh, did not want to put that automation on the fader because that would mean that when I was mixing and getting the kind of final levels, I wouldn't be able to make little changes without going into the automation. So I did that via, um, this utility here and it's just boosting and cutting a few db in different places just to make the mix sound better the kick on its own can be a bit overpowering but you don't want to lose it in more busy sections it's got the kick drum here the next thing that comes in is the clap not the snare so the snare doesn't come until later the clap this is the clap it kind of acts as the snare for the first bit um, again, compression, EQ, volume modulation, and it's also, so you have these other types of effects called sends, and returns, so, um, that's where you can kind of send a little bit of your sound to an effect if you don't want to be overwhelming the system by having a bunch of effects open, and also so 
you can do more subtle effects. So I have it sent to my Reaver and Delay, which are just standard Ableton plugins. Um, you can have a look at the settings if that interests you. Um, just a little bit, you can probably hear the delay on it. Um, and that's just to give it a little bit more interesting rhythm and to tie the whole thing together. So if you have a bunch of different elements sent to the same reverb and the same delay, they're going to sound a lot more like it was in an actual room, um, rather than just a bunch of sounds that you made up on a computer. So together, you can clap. And there's just a little clap roll there, which is that kind of weirder sounding clap. Um, and that's just done in the MIDI, uh, just to make it more interesting. Um, and that's the beat for the first, probably over two minutes of the song, yeah. Until this snare comes in and kind of takes over from the clap. I took a lot of low frequencies out of this snare just because it's interfering with synths, bass, um, kick drum, and a little bit of compression as well. And that sent to my re reverb and delay too. Not a lot of drums get sent to effects, although I've sent quite a lot of them here. Um, but just, yeah, even the sound of the kick to delay. Delay I use more for drums than reverb, but snare I want quite a lot of reverb on it. So you can hear that's got quite a lot of reverb on it. Um, and that's just to make it sound bigger. It sounded quite thin once I EQ'd it out, so... Um, and I've got these hi-hats too, which hopefully, if the stereo sound thing is working, then you should hear his pound to the left, so that's 17 to the left. I don't really have a formula for that, it's just feel it out, basically. Um, I've still got that clap in there as well. Again, uh, no compression on this, just EQ. Uh, a bit of volume changing as well for when this tambourine comes in later. So the drums in this part, so the kind of second drum pattern. drums drop out for a second and we've got this kind of breakdown build section uh, where this so there's things that change here uh, we've got this open hi-hat this is just a really simple I only treat that as a perk uh, perk is short for percussion uh, we've got this tambourine which is mimicking the hi-hat except I didn't do this via midi and then flattening it I just did this in the audio itself, and to create that sort of rhythm, I had one, the first one louder, the next one dropped again, about 7 dB there, and I just duplicated those, so it's like loud, quiet, loud, quiet, so you get that live feeling of someone actually playing. Sounds like this. And that's panned opposite to the hi-hat, and I pan my hi-hats left, I like drummer's perspective. It really depends on who you are and what you like to do, but I prefer drummer's perspective. So I have hi-hat over to the left, and this tambourine over to the right. Um, opposites, like the same, so 17 to the right, 17 to the left, just to make it sound balanced. Um, and this open hi-hat is to the left as well, uh, to make it feel more like a real kit. But that open hi-hat is a really subtle part. So that's the kind of, as it builds up, uh, there's more here, so we got this cowbell, and that's further to the right. Um, I'm putting the perks further out so that they're not kind of messing up the middle. The middle is where most of the important things are. Uh, opposite to that, I've got this kind of TV, I don't know what to call it, TV sound, with quite a lot of delay on it. Again, quite quiet, very subtle. Uh, and that's all the drums. In terms of the m group, I haven't put any effects on here, and sometimes I would maybe put um, a glue compressor on here, or a drum bus. These drums are pretty compressed already. Um, pretty full on with some of the effects, the compression, these samples, so I just left that 
Um, so all the drums together in the kind of the busiest section uh, sound like this. simple beat and I just want something that drives this song forward gives it that um, house techno feel so in terms of the rhythm as well I've got this 123 BPM so that's not it's not it's not on the faster side of a kind of house techno song but um, the song already wasn't really fast so I didn't really want to push the tempo too much um, to me that's a good tempo, it's 4-4, four, four. I've got quite a 4 on the floor feel with the kick. Um, so, it's a very basic beat, it's just something that drives the whole song forward. Uh, it's a long song, so I just want something consistent, driving, on, on the beat, and quite synthetic sounding. So that's what I did for the drums. Um, in terms of grouping the tracks, uh, just because I'm about to do this, that's pretty much the only reason why I would have grouped them, just to make this look a lot neater. Uh, also gives me the ability to turn them all up and down at the same time without having to select them all, so just convenience sake, not really for any, I guess, technical purpose. So moving on to the bass, there is only one bass, it's a synth bass. Uh, it's this really nice one, I think, from the Ableton stock sounds. I didn't do too much to it, to be honest, here. Um, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. Just doing these root notes, and what I did was, this is off the beat, so if I give the metronome... There's a couple reasons why it's off the beat like that. Um, off the beat just means when the first beat, you know, the beat in every bar, it's playing not on that beat, it's playing just after, or sometimes I guess just before, depending on how you look at it. Um, and that's just because the kick, if we go back to the drums, uh, the kick is playing on every beat. So when you bring this bass, you get a nice sort of interplay between these parts. And the relationship between the kick and the bass is really important because that's most of your low end. You don't really want anything else over here. Uh, I wanted the kick to be the lowest, so I did a little bit, of, I did a cut a bit of the bass out of this bass, um, but it still sounds pretty low. And again, that off the beat helps them not to interfere too much. Um, again, this is the same thing with the kick, just a bit of volume modulation that I did with this plugin, nothing too complicated. Um, and this bass pattern is the same throughout the whole song, so the chords don't change, the bass doesn't change, but the feeling of the bass, it can sound and it points like it is different, but that's just to do with the rhythm overall of the song. Um, and I quite like that, and the bass is one of these consistent parts along with the drums, um, even more so than the drums, that keeps the song steady moving forward and not um i guess like keeps people keeps something familiar for people to listen to while all these other parts are changing and adding stuff in and taking stuff away these are like consistent parts for the rhythm section which is something quite um depending on what type of house or techno you're listening to something quite characteristic um that almost kind of like you feel was hypnotized by the fact that the same drum beat might play for like five minutes and that's sort of the idea that I was going for here. Um, so the drums and bass together um, sound like this. to mention bass pan center. We don't really want the bass pan to either side. Next is guitar. So there's a kind of reason why you order things this way. 
I suppose it's just like standard practice. So I've got the bass, now I've got this guitar. Um, so this is the first kind of point of interest here, I suppose, in terms of the original song. Um, they did not use any bass from the original song, but I used guitar from the original song. So this is just a guitar sample. I'll let you have a listen. <laughs> Hopefully you're familiar with the actual song Windowsill, and this is something I took directly from that mix. Um, and what I did to get it in time is I used Ableton's warp tool, and as you might be able to see here, um, I just dragged each part into time, and we call these bits transients, and that's just kind of the biggest part of a waveform, so where each note is hitting here. So I pulled these into time. Uh, I quite liked the effect of it sounding a little bit unnatural, a little bit warped. Um, sometimes you don't want that, but I quite liked it for this. Um, this might look like a lot of effects to s some of you who don't kind of do this stuff, but honestly, it's, n it's not that much. Um, and all of these, essentially up to, or well, almost all of these, are just things that I did to make it sound kind of um, worn out and old-fashioned almost and that's just kind of to differ differentiate from the original song um, and also just to kind of give that feeling of like uh, the, the guitar being slightly washed out because I didn't want the guitar to dominate so I wanted the impression immediately pretty much that Unlike the original song, this isn't a guitar-driven song, and the guitar kind of takes the back seat once the other elements come in. So to do that, I use a saturator, and that was actually almost the opposite effect, but it was just to make it sound a little bit rougher and a little bit fuller before I almost take lots of it away. So now I've got this overdrive. Um, this is originally a clean guitar, but I wanted a little bit of overdrive on it. This bit reduction, again, is just to almost lower the quality, which you wouldn't usually think you want to do, but for this, that was the aim here, so I used a bit of bit reduction. This glue compressor, I didn't want a lot of compression, so this was just a light um, compression, because it's already compressed on the original song, so I didn't need a lot of compression, but just want a little bit to bring it together at this point in the kind of signal path, I suppose. Another bit of EQ. I took a lot of lows out so it wouldn't interfere, took a lot of highs out. I just wanted it very much in the mid-range. This vinyl distortion just has a bit of vinyl crackle, which is quite subtle. I don't really want you to hear it because I don't want to sound like a lo-fi song. But just a little bit of vinyl distortion here. And again, another bit of volume modulation. So this guitar sounds like this. That's not the guitar. <laughs> switch views. Um, there's two views in Ableton and most doors to be able to, just for people that don't know, to be able to kind of mix almost is more this one. You want to arrange in this one. Um, so go to this view, you can see my sends. I send a little bit of this to my reverb and delay um, and I panned it to the right just because you want most things in the center. You want to be your bass, your kick and your vocal and not a lot else. So that guitar there. So the guitar with the drums and the bass sounds like this. So you're kind of getting that blend of what is basically kind of like an emo song, indie song, guitar part mixed with this house part, which the house rhythm section, which is kind of what I was aiming for, and because that comes very early in the song, um, that is kind of the sets the mood almost, which is what I wanted to do. One more guitar part here. This part's less significant. Um, this guitar too is a lead part. Sorry, lead part. Again, audio taken from the original one. 
Uh, things I did here is I'll go through this in order. Use the utility to make it mono. It's not actually mono, it's panned to one side, but um, because the original audio file was panned to a different side from where I wanted it, I set it as mono. It was the first thing I did so that I could then move it myself later. Bit of overdrive. Again, add a little bit of distortion, make it sound a bit thicker. Compressor, because um, for the kind of rough emo indie sound, the this was okay to be a little bit um, inconsistent, but for a song like this, I want it really rhythmically tight, consistent. So that's why I did this warping again uh, to bring into time, and I use this compressor to bring the dynamics, so the volumes, to be more consistent. Uh, this EQ looks a little bit crazy, <laughs> I guess, but um, it's standard stuff here. Basically what I've done is just cut specific frequencies that were ringing out or just causing problems. So if I take this EQ out, you can kind of listen to the difference. So. So you might be able to hear, I don't know how well it comes across in the video, but there's a few frequencies in there that are just not um, not stuff you want to hear, just r ringing out overtones, maybe a bit buzzing. So what I did is I just found those by kind of searching through and boosting them. So I'd go through like this and try and find them. Did that go to the last? Uh, try and find these frequencies and then cut them. Um, and again, I just cut this to make sure that it wasn't interfering anywhere other than it needs to be. So, with the EQ. And, out. and that's just to get rid of some of that ringing, and again, some volume modulation, that's all I did there. Switch view. I used a bit of reverb. It was quite reverb heavy already. The only reason I added more reverb is... Um, as I spoke about earlier, trying to kind of glue the whole thing together, so that's the only reason I would have added more. Um, panned opposite from the upper guitar, because I want them to be almost like connected, but on opposite sides of the stereo image, so that it's um, leaving space for the vocal in the middle. So, drums, bass, both guitars, um, sounds like this. add on those guitars. The guitars are, other than the vocals, pretty much the only part I took from the original song. Um, and yeah, I, I like the feel it gives to the song, so I'm glad I included those. They're a bit of a hassle, some of that EQing, some of that warping into time, but it paid off, I think, so. I'm actually going to jump down to this synth here, because these other ones don't come in until later in the song. So, this is a pluck, and that's just, it is still a synth, it's just a kind of type of synth, so I use this plugin called Surge, which is like a free synth plugin. I really like it, I like the presets, I think it's really suited to this style of music especially. Um, this is just in the pluck category, and piano remains too, which is just one that I like. I don't tend to do a lot to these um, presets once I get them, to be honest, because I quite like them. Um, I just did a bit of EQing, probably some effects here. Yeah, some reverb and some panning. Uh, and that sounds like this. And I didn't want this to sound. Um, I don't really want this to um, sustain the note, I just kind of want it to hit once and kind of fade away, um, give that kind of dreamy feel to it. So with all of those parts together sounds like this try and find a bit where they're all together actually i think there's a bit where they're all together um those the pluck and the uh second guitar both occupy quite high frequency high mids so i left probably deliberately did not fit those together but with the other guitar it's like this.
was quite a prominent sound for the whole thing. Um, the other synths, so there's these two are actually the same synth, so I'll go for the one that comes into the song first, so this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Again, Surge, I like Surge for plucks and pads especially. Um, I can go for an Ableton or maybe the contact sort of stuff for leads, but I like these for plucks and for... Uh, Ableton has some nice plucks too, but for um, pads and polysynth especially, this is good. Um, again, another preset, not much that I did to it in here. Um, bit of EQ, I boosted a little bit and cut a little bit, nothing that interesting. I used this utility to make it wider, so I didn't pan it to one side, I wanted it just to feel like it was um, kind of coming at you from like this, so it's not really a better way of explaining it. Um, almost sitting on the outside of the mix, pushing inwards. Um, this auto filter I'll come to in a second, again another bit of volume modulation. The main thing here is this compressor. So a feature of a lot of electronic music is what we call side chaining. And that's basically where the compressor isn't acting on um tri isn't triggered by the sound itself, it's triggered by a different sound in the mix. So usually it's kick drum and that's what I've done here. Um so first I'll just let you hear it with and without side chaining. So with <laughs> So you hear it make a massive difference to the sound, and what it's essentially doing is when the kick drum's hitting, that synth is pretty much muted. Um, it's dropping right down in volume here. You can see that in the motion. Not completely, it was not muted, maybe a bad term for it, but it's just dropping in volume and it gives that um, really rhythmic feel to something that would otherwise be like this. <laughs> which is very stagnant and that's not really what you want for a song with a driving rhythm, you want something you can make people feel like dance to. Um, so you want this, that's what the side chaining does and it just gives a lot of rhythm and it also makes sure that it's not interfering with the bass. So this auto filter. I'll speak about the auto filter in a second once I've gone through this other forms, other pads. Um, so this pad is the same preset, this raw preset, uh, it's not got the side chaining on it, and in terms of the MIDI that I actually put in, it's got a rhythm itself, so it sounds like this. So instead of this one, which is holding out these chords and using the side chain for rhythm, it's got its own rhythm, so it sounds a lot more punchy, and that's what I bring in um, for the breakdown section of the song. So. This is going to come into layer, but there's a switch off here, and that's where these auto fillers come in, so why don't I make these a bit bigger? There's a trade off here, and you can hear it, um, but I just play this through and explain what's going on. So what's going on here is, again, quite a um, common thing for electronic music. Obviously DJs do this a lot, and that's just bringing down um, the cutoff frequency here. So you can watch it happen, the auto filler here. Uh, it's coming down, it's taking out all these higher frequencies until it's so low you can't hear it. And that's what this red line is doing, that's modulation or automation, I suppose. And then this one's doing the opposite, so it's almost, instead of coming out, it's being brought in. So I'm bringing the frequency, the call frequency, all the way from the bottom, all the way up. It's the wrong one. And that's just to have a bit of an interesting part, just to add the switch between them. Um, for the synths and to make this last chorus feel more like the first choruses so you don't stray too far from the original sound. So all together 
Um, I'll play this. Play this section here. instrumental part. Uh, you can hear it already starts to get pretty busy, which is why all these volumes, EQs, panning is really important to create space for the vocal. The last sort of non-vocal thing is just a riser, which is, you'll be quite familiar with this sound even if you don't know what the word riser means. I'll just play it. And that's just essentially something, it's just white noise that's kind of building up. Uh, I've had a little bit of reverb and delay, so it kind of you can still hear after it's done, but this, in the context of the whole song, just builds you up into a new section. Uh, nothing that interesting. I've got a bit of auto panning on that, so it's going across from left to right. Um, and that's just, again, to make the sound a bit more interesting. They can sound a bit dead sometimes, a riser. Um, so you want to make it sound interesting enough, but also make clear to whoever's listening that a new section is about to come right now and that's what these do to build into choruses. I only use two in the whole song so I don't go crazy with it and keep the volume quite low. So that's all the instrumental parts. Um, you can see here this, this, vo um, this you can ignore this track actually. So it's three different vocal tracks, um, all using original samples, well the original vocal from Windowsill. Um, this one is the most kind of true to that, I suppose. Um, this is just the lead vocal. Sat out on my window sill. So here, there's quite a lot of effects, so bear with me, I'll try and explain them all. Um, this one has the warp on it again, and I made this warp sound a lot more unnatural. Um, and that's just to add to the sort of electronic feeling of these vocals. I don't want it to sound dry and natural, I want it to sound kind of otherworldly, almost robotic. Um, I didn't really pit- I did some pitching, but this was really the thing that helped. I didn't use a lot of auto-tune and everything. I don't know about you, Fanny, at all. I didn't. I had at one point, but I think I took it off. Um, so, so out on my window. you can hear the like- the vowels are a bit cut up, and that's what I was going for there. In terms of these effects, I've got a de -esser, so I didn't really find this on the original mix, maybe I should have, I mixed it a while ago. <laughs> but I found that the, some of the S sounds were very harsh, uh, once they've been through all of these effects, probably. Um, so the de is just a kind of type of compression almost that just takes out those sounds, it's not that interesting. Use this compression plugin, another free plugin. I don't pay for plugins. I don't have enough money. If you want me to pay for plugins, you should buy my music on Bandcamp. <laughs> Just a vocal preset on this compressor. Um, nothing that interesting going on here. A little bit of um, output boosting. Just because this vocal sound quite quiet. And I boosted at this point in the signal chain. And then I could alter volumes later when I was actually mixing it. Um, EQ, pretty normal too. You want the vocal to take up quite a lot of space. Uh, you mould other things around the vocal and kind of let the vocal sit wherever it is. I cut out one frequency that's causing some problems, so if I do... Sad out on my window sill. Sad out on my window sill. I don't actually know what that was. There was a lot of kind of harsh sounding stuff once I put it through a lot of effects, I was just trying to sort of reduce harshness and just make it sound a lot cleaner. This, I'll get to these in a second because these aren't on yet, they come on, so a lot of stuff comes on and off. Um, I'll show the modulation window, the alternation window in a second. Um, got this delay, Valhalla delay, 16th note. Um, 
quite a prominent delay. It's not meant to be subtle like the return. I want to hear it like in this part. So hello on my window. Sill. Apologies for the crackling of my computer. It's not coping very well. Um Yeah, so you want this this delay is meant to be prominent, it's meant to sound like an effect, I don't want it to be subtle. Um and that again adds that sort of not natural feeling that I was going for. I want it to be slightly unnatural. Um, just sound a bit weird, to be honest. <laughs> um, it makes sound different from the original, and that's what I was wanting to do. So, these... So I'll show some modulations. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. Automation. I always call it modulation. This automation here. Um, go to this over... I'll go to the delay first, just because we were talking about it. Uh, this is just turning the device on and off, that's not interesting. The mix, so this is what, this is why it sounds like, there's no delay here. So then up to here. Oh. You hear that delay starts, and that's because the mix, so the overall amount of the delay, is increasing from this, the end of this line, into when it just says sil. Um, and that's just, so if there was a lot of delay here, so I did this. Crazy. You don't want all that delay. It messes it up. You can't hear what I'm saying. Just want that delay to come at the end. Almost carrying you over to the next part. And I did that quite a few times. Across here. Um, do a little bit again. But mostly... Do at the end of this phrase. And that's just almost... It's a transition thing. Um, and it also just makes the delay sound a little more interesting. Uh, allows you to do a lot more stuff with delay if it's not gonna get in the way of being able to tell what I'm actually saying. So, oh, oh, this is more examples of the delay. So the delay modulation is not interesting, it's just bringing delay in and out. Um, I changed the delay note at one point. So that's just... Oh. You almost hear that weird noise. And that's just me changing how fast the delay is. Um, I think that's just an interesting effect. There's not really any particular reason why I did that. I just thought it sounded cool. <laughs> uh, which is a valid reason to do things, I've learned in music. You don't have to explain everything. Some things just sound cool. Um, this is a... So this is a pitch plugin. Pitch shifter harmonizer plugin. Uh, pitch proof. I've got this set to um, an octave up, which is just like the same note, but higher, basically. Uh, people who don't really do theory. The crackling is just because there's so many plugins on this track, I apologize. That's gonna really annoy me. We, we move, because I said I'd put this up tomorrow, and... I haven't done it yet, so I'm not going to re-record it. Um, but you can hear the the high that sort of album the chipmunks hyper pop style thing going on. As for the lower octaves, uh, I just use so each individual sample I went into um, this view and I did it here, just because it gives a different effect a different sound. So some of these are pitched down. Some of it's pitched down like that. Um, and that's just to add some kind of interesting stuff to the vocal basically. And uh, because it's repeating the same phrase a lot, you want um, the pitch of it to change and you want to keep people interested. Because um, all the risk with a song like this is that it might get quite boring after a while. Um, this overdrive isn't that interesting, it's just adding a bit of grit in certain sections uh, for the choruses mostly. Um, not really anything to say there. Um, some things you just do for subtle effects and they're not that interesting to really talk about, I suppose, but um, in combination a lot of subtle things obviously is what makes a good mix. So that's a lead vocal. Um, it's not full phrases, so it's just chopped parts of the original vocal, and I just took parts that I like. Um, 
that felt to me like distinct sections. Um, oh no, there you go. Uh, felt like distinct sections to me, and combined with these other vocal parts, I'm going to show you. Uh, just, I just wanted it to sound like a mix between the original, which is quite a natural singer songwriter type song. That I just wrote with the guitar. Um, and then this sort of house techno dance thing that I have going on for this remix. Um, so a combination of both what I'm going to show you in a minute and that lead vocal kind of achieved that for me. So got what I call vocal chops here. Essentially what I did was um, I went into, uh, if I show you here, the simpler and I just dragged in a part of the vocal that I liked. Um, from so of all the audio tracks, just a part that I liked, and I decided to chop each beat up and assign it to a different key on the keyboard or a MIDI keyboard that I've got behind me, or a lot of the time just my computer keyboard. Um, and I set that to a drum rack, and essentially all that does is mean that I can play each individual beat of that sample as a different. Um, key, so you can get this sort of um, stuttering effect, you get sounds very detached and very unnatural. Um, so I'll play this part. I don't know why that crackle's happening. Um, this is pitched up. Again, this is pitched all the way up, so the dry wet's all the way up, so you can't hear what the original pitch is, it's just the pitched up bit. Compression, EQ. Um, and this is just, there's not really, because this is almost deceiving, because it looks like there's actual keyboard notes that I'm playing here. That's just what keys I've assigned it to, so I don't think that this, what is that, a B? Like this note probably isn't a B, but it's just what it was assigned to on my keyboard, so I just had to find a melody that worked. But obviously it's all going to be in the key because the each, um, each slice is from the song, so it's all of the notes that I sung were in the key of the song originally. Um, so I just played in something that I felt like was, was nice, there's not much to it. That's panned quite heavily to the left. Um, and got some pretty heavy reverb and delay going on here. As does the second one, so second one, exact same idea, just different part. Opposite side. Um, sounds even more cool than robotic with this weird buzz thing I've got going on. Um, so that's that's the vocals. Uh, I'll try and get all the vocals together. Hope it doesn't sound like an absolute nightmare. That's gonna be annoying. Um, I'm gonna see if it doesn't sound like it is. Okay. Um, I might pause the recording and come back and see if I can fix it. So, apologies for the weird jump cut. Um, Okay, so wasn't really able to fix the crackling noise, but we'll move on. I might try and re-record over this later, but if I don't and this part is still in, then I am sorry. But um, I want to get this up for the release of the thing. And to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this because it's literally just I'm trying to record and play Ableton at the same time. My computer is not having it, so... I can still show you all the effects. To be honest, the listening part um, is really more to do with uh, showing examples, but most of the stuff is visual anyway. Um, and you can hear the actual song, so I have showed you all the individual parts. Um, uh, so I have just decided to move on to the master. So for anyone who doesn't know, I guess there's almost there's a few stages to a song, but for a remix like this, you're kind of aiming to do almost production side of it, I guess, kind of arranging it out, picking sounds, 
manipulating the sounds, maybe different presets. And then you're looking to do a mix, so that's when you bring in your EQ, your compression, most of your effects will come in mixing. If you're doing panning, volume, so the bulk of the work there, I mean, as the name suggests, a remix. Now it's the same for most stuff as well though. And then you've got mastering, and to be honest, I'm not a mastering engineer, so any mastering engineers, don't, don't be alarmed uh, by my very bad mastering. I'm trying and I will never claim to be a mastering engineer, but I will claim that I mastered this, because I did. Essentially, a mastering, for anyone who doesn't know, is the finishing touch for a song, and you're aiming to make it loud enough, uh, make it clear using compressors, limiters. There's a lot to it. A lot of people might say it's just making it louder. There's a lot to it. Uh, I tend to keep it pretty simple, but people dedicate their whole careers to it, and it's like an art form in itself. I have a lot of respect for mastering engineers, but uh, I'm just going to show you what I did, because I think at the level I'm at, it's a lot easier to do it yourself, because you don't have to pay someone. <laughs> and I don't have enough money to really be paying someone. If I'm not going to make that money back, then there's it's easier just for me to do it myself. For my own song, I'm not that bothered if the master isn't top quality, it just has to be the right volume, basically, to me, and I'm sound a little bit clearer. So, this is actually one of the more complicated masters I've done. So, essentially, I went into audio effects in Ableton, utilities, audio effect rack, mastering, and I just found a preset that I thought sounded pretty good. Um, I went with this master full chain. And that, as far as I'm aware, came in with this compressor overdrive. All of these, here at the end, I added in, uh, the EQ was probably already there, I added in this extra plugin, I'll get to that. And these have like macro, um, kind of mixer knob thing, I forgot the name of them for a second there, um, to control each of these. So. Very slight EQing going on here, adding a little bit of high, taking a little bit of the bass out, and then just cutting it here, because you don't- this is not really an audible frequency below 20 hertz. you're not going to hear that, but you will feel it on big speakers. So if anyone wants to play this on a big speaker with a lot of bass, you would feel that rumble, and you just get- it just muddies everything, it doesn't sound very good. So cut that out, boost a little bit of these highs. And I move on to this plugin, which is called Fresh Air, which if you produce music, you've probably seen all the YouTube ads for it, and that's why I got it, and I only used it lightly, to be honest, I'm still trying it out to see if I really actually like it or not. <laughs> so not sponsored by any means. Um, but I just added a slight bit, and this just adds a little bit more mids and highs. Um, which I, I thought sounded nice, it doesn't do an awful lot, but I'm just trying it out, and I thought it sounded pretty good. This compressor is a glue compressor, light compression going on here just to um, make sure everything in the mix can be heard and sounds clear enough. A little bit of overdrive here, um, just adds a little bit of grit. If you were doing stuff analog, so I've done this all in the box, so all on my laptop, if you were doing stuff analog, um, you would get a nice little warm distortion if you were pushing the volumes up in all of your analog gear, you get this nice warmth and distortion, which you don't really get with digital because you can't, if you push the volume up, you just get a horrible peaking, crackly noise. Um, so the overdrive kind of compensates for that, but I only use it very lightly. You can see about 2%. It's really nothing big there. I didn't use this limiter, I used a different limiter just because I'm used to using it. A different one. Um, this spectrum is just so you can see, you know, be prepared for the horrible crack. Um, so you can see where the frequency activity is. So you can see there's quite a lot of low frequency activity here. Um, that's fine, that wasn't an issue for me, that was kind of what I was going for in a way, so. Not concerned there, but it's just good to be able to see if it was if it was looking crazy, then obviously you'd want to go back to the mixing stage and think, okay, maybe 
I should change my EQing a bit if I had like nothing but I wasn't concerned with it this time. So this is this part, so this chain, which is just a chain, it's just sort of a group of effects and plugins and things to make it sound good. Um, this chain was for kind of clarity's sake, um, final bits of EQ and compression just to make sure the mix was sounding good. Everything after that was volume, so. The way I did this, which I literally learned from a YouTube video, because you can learn so much from YouTube videos. Um, I use this limiter, which is a free limiter. And a limiter is just like a really extreme compressor. Um, and it helps you control the overall volume of something, as well as kind of what the same things the compressor does in terms of the dynamics. I got this loudness meter. Um, and this stuff, I guess, isn't particularly interesting, but... You want this part, the integrated LUFS, to be like around minus 14 from most streaming services. And the reason why you would do this, because you might think, oh, well, the streaming services will change the volume themselves. And they will, but that will make your mix sound um, like trash a lot of the time. So you want to get it in that ballpark yourself um, to avoid the horror of putting it out streaming and then listening to it on Spotify and being like, that's not how it sounded in my door, which is um, just the name of this type of music program, Digital Audio Workstation. So yeah, we're listening to it at your door, you might think it sounds great, but it's way too quiet. And when they boost the volume and you go to Spotify or Apple Music or something, uh, it's just, it doesn't sound the same when everything's boosted up. Uh, there might be like a, say those frequencies that cow the EQ earlier, if you're boosting everything, those are going to be really loud. And you might not have heard them when they were, everything was quiet, but you will hear it when everything's loud. So you want to make sure everything's loud enough, essentially. And this limiter is just making sure it doesn't go over minus 1 dB, but you also just want it to be um, just loud enough, essentially. So I'll not play the whole thing, but an idea of I'll leave the limiter on, because that's just a volume thing. Uh, this is also showing you what all the parts sound like together, so I'll go to a part. This sounds like a good part to go to. Um, and I'll just show you what it sounds like with this master chain on and without. So I'll start with it without. I'll add it on and off. And if you look at the little yellow um, kind of on and off switch here, that'll tell you when things are on or off or not. So start with it off. I'll bring it in, you can, you can hear the kind of subtle difference going on there, so. punchier to my ears anyway maybe not to you but to me uh, and that's kind of all you're really aiming for mastering is just to make overall you want to sound better <laughs> essentially and then the only other thing i did here was top and tail so i just added in fade out and then this is where i stop it um when i'm exporting it which i'll touch on maybe uh, in a minute. Um, this is just where, this is just saying where things stop because if I, if the last thing that played, if I stopped right here, so if I actually do that right now, I take this tail off, just stop right here. Here that sounds a bit weird, so I'll play it. That sounds abrupt. Sounds like you just skipped the last four seconds. Just not ideal. Whereas with this fade out and letting the delay ring out, so I have what I had before, sounds like this. A lot more natural sounding finish. Um, and just something that brings a nice end to the song. Um, and then the start, you just don't want everything punching at you right from the start of a song. You want like a second maybe not even a full second, just to let yourself 
get into look let yourself get into the tracks because this is this is gonna be in someone's playlist. You don't want to jump right from the end of it. Everyone's one boom guitar first second. It's gonna be a bit overwhelming. So just like a fraction of a second here. Not even a fraction. Quite quite a significant. Just instead of this, just straight in there, and if obviously if this wasn't just a guitar, it would be more impactful. But you still don't want something jumping straight in, so you just undo that and play that again. Just gives you a second to get into it. Um, that's the mastering process, um, which is kind of the final step. And the only thing I haven't touched on, which I might touch on here even though you can't really see it, is um, kind of arranging it out. And the only thing I really did for arranging it out is I followed a pretty simple structure, so I kind of went verse, chorus, I guess intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, breakdown, final chorus. So integrating parts of the original structure of a more indie, pop, emo, a popular music song with the more, with a structure of more electronic music. So adding in that breakdown section rather than a bridge or like a guitar solo part. Um, there wasn't really much of a bridge to Mundo Solo, the original one from what I remember. It's actually been a while since I've listened to it. Um, because I've tried to immerse myself more in the remix than the original and just let myself think of all these ideas for it. So in terms of arranging it out, um, as you can see here actually, um, you want to have some dynamics going on. So you can see it's, it's, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, starting off quiet, you're building up, you're building up. Then you're building up and, and that's around where the chorus is. here but you don't want everything to completely build up so got this other verse more quiet and you're this is kind of the loudest part pre-breakdown so this is it kind of peaks up here and then it's high energy because it's got that driving rhythm but as you can see it's almost the same volume as that intro and how i'm looking at the volumes and visually for people who maybe don't know um i'm pretty it's a pretty familiar concept but um just the the amplitude of the wave so how high it's coming up here and while i'm pointing at the screen you can't see that how high it's coming up here. So lower down here, quieter, higher up there, louder. So you can see overall there's like we quieter parts in there um, and louder parts. So got this breakdown and then you have to build up. Vocal chops that maybe weren't as clear earlier. And so this last chorus is the loudest part of the song. So this is where everything is here. <laughs> to a climax, it's like a story, you know, you want the very kind of the last part of the middle almost to like because the ending, I'd say, is the outro. The beginning is this intro. But you want to still have a flow to the middle of the song too, which is where the structure comes in. So this is kind of the loudest section here and it starts to tail
the last clap and the song is finished. And I didn't do a full fade out, I prefer an outro where I bring parts out gradually rather than having everything playing and fading it all out. Both are fine, depends on what style you're going for. This is quite a driving, quite a punchy thing, I didn't want it to sort of weakly fade away at the end. I want quite a definitive ending, it's also quite a long song, it sits about five and a half minutes, six minutes, so you don't want it feeling like it's going on forever. Sometimes you want that feeling as an emotional thing, but for this song I want an abrupt ending, I want it to go right, we're finished here, um, just so it feels like it is one thing, it doesn't feel like something that's going on forever and it's a long song. Um, yeah, so that's the mastering and sort of final topping and tailing of it. And then after this, what I did was I had album art to do, which I just did on my iPad, I just drew it out. Um, and then there's all the sort of admin -y stuff, which is even more boring, so I will not be going over that. Um, and that's sort of, yeah, this is just my process for making music and Obviously this is slightly different from a usual mix, but for the most part, most of my mixes will be a similar process too, and obviously for my original music, so that still originally, it would involve a lot more recording and writing first. Um, the mix process is very similar, so kind of take from that what you will, I suppose. It's, everyone does stuff a little bit differently, and there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's certain conventions to follow, but ultimately just do what you feel like and these are the things that I do. If you have any, unless you're some sort of like audio bro who's gonna try and tell me that I'm doing everything wrong, your comment will not be appreciated. But anyone else with anything that they would have done differently or any questions, just feel free to ask me, um, comment, even DM. And if you really like the sound of this song, or like the sound of my other mixes, uh, I have a business email which you can find on all my social media. Um, and it's orlathomasmusic at gmail.com. Uh, and you can email me about any mixing or production um, things that you want done. So if you want me to mix your song, I'm open to doing that. Um, yeah, any questions as well, not even, you don't have to commit yourself to wanting me to mix something, but if you have a question, just contact, comment, email, wherever you feel like. And this song, as of today, hopefully if I get this video up in time, uh, is out on streaming services, there'll be a link either in my bio or the description of this video, depending on what platform you're watching this on. Um, to stream it and it's been on Bandcamp for a couple weeks so you can buy it there as well and that is really really helpful to me as an artist, uh, independent, small artist, so streaming for the song Bandcamp and yeah let me know what you think of the song and of this video and um, the format and yeah hopefully I'll do another one of these soon with a new song. Um, yeah hope you enjoyed. <laughs>